Uh, as I mentioned, this is a rig that you can pour the gel in and also run the gel. So to run the gel, we're going to take this out uh, firmly but carefully, kind of diagonally like that. Uh, the comb comes with it, and we're going to take the comb out. But I think just to have a place to set it, I'm going to orient the rig this way. And I'm planning ahead already for the orientation of the electrodes. So we're going to run from black towards red, the top at the top of the screen. So the top is now uh, where the top of the gel is. And you know what? I feel a little bit safer if I pour the buffer in already. So I'm going to fill this up with the TAE buffer. Uh, on the wells on the rig here, uh, there's some reservoirs off to the side. And those are going to hold most of the volume. Uh, it's hard to see in here, but there's a little wire that runs at the base of this all the way at the bottom there and here. And so we're basically setting up an electro electric uh, potential difference between one side and the other side based on that little wire. And so it's going to pass a current through this liquid uh, and with it, the gel containing your DNA samples. Okay, so I poured in the buffer until just when it's over the top of the gel. So when I move this, you don't see any uh, ridges where the gel peaks up above the auger. Or, I'm sorry, above the buffer. That would, uh, we'd probably want to add some more if that was the case. So I'm taking the comb out now. I'm going to rock it just a little bit to unseat it. But mostly just want to go straight up. So got it out of there. That wasn't too hard. And as I look down, if I look down at the right angle here, you can see there are just depressions in there. Um, they look they're so black, they kind of look like you could go all the way through those. Uh, but the, the comb is positioned in such a way that they'd be, uh, there's a little barrier of auger below these. So we're going to add in liquids to those. We're putting liquid into a depression that's already inside of liquid. So kind of an interesting physical properties test here. The liquid we're going to add is a little more dense. And so it's going to fall to the bottom as I put it in here. And I uh, hope to show you that in a little bit. So here are the samples we had. We got them out of the thermal cycler. Uh, they're labeled. They've got that volume that we added before. And I'm going to add to these the uh, loading die. So the loading die, uh, five microliters of that. The loading die serves a couple of purposes. It makes the liquid overall uh, a little bit heavier it makes it visible in this clear liquid solution that we're going to put it into and the purple on here is not accidental that purple actually is going to run as we uh, put the electrical current on there it's going to run with the current and kind of with the dna and let us keep track of where the dna should be uh, keep note we really can't see the dna at any point in this process until we get this whole apparatus under the a gel imaging system. So we kind of have to go on the behavior of the purple dye to let us know where the DNA should be. The purple dye goes faster uh, than small pieces of DNA, and so it should go faster than any piece of DNA that we tried to make using PCR. So I'll just do one of these to get you started. Uh, five microliters of the loading dye. Uh, big important thing to keep track of, this one's called loading dye. It's a purple solution. Uh, this one is called ladder. It's a purple solution. The ladder already contains pieces of DNA, these DNA size standards, and it's a lot more expensive. So don't accidentally go adding ladder to all of your samples. Uh, you won't be able to see your samples and you'll waste a whole bunch of ladder that we didn't need to waste. So use instead the one called loading die or loading buffer. Uh, so I'm going to add that purple liquid to clear liquid and it's really purple so that's going to make the whole solution turn purple uh, this is one way of mixing if you want to skip a vortexing step you can thoroughly pipette up and down works well if the amount you're pipetting is a large proportion of the total volume which it is here so that was 25 total volume and i was pipetting up and down five microliters uh, that's basically what all your samples are going to look like I'll go ahead and maybe just load these on the gel so you can see what's going to happen. Skip making an extra edit. So as we get ready to load these into the gel, we're going to start by adding that 
ladder. So this time we do want to add the ladder. And we're going to add it specifically to a well that we know about. So uh, in my gel, I know that the first well, counting from the left over, the uh, first one's going to be the ladder. So I uh, mixed it up by tapping. Decent substitute for vortexing. Three microliters of that. And I'm going to load it into the gel. So, if I can do this without... Uh, I can see it pretty well. It might be a little hard for you to see. Um, so I'm going to actually stabilize the pipetter by putting a fingertip against the uh, pipetter tip. And I'm going to put this in so that the pipetter tip is in the well. And I can tell it's in the well. It's sort of in the well, not touching the bottom. And that way, the liquid, when it falls out, uh, will go into where it needs to go and not uh, spill out the top. So this is pretty faint on the video, as far as I can tell. Uh, I didn't see it go anywhere that it wasn't supposed to. So I'm going to have some faith that I put the right thing in the right place. And let me just get you one more. The DNA sample that I prepped. So changing tips every time. Of course, these have different uh, DNA solutions inside of them. Don't want to mix those up. The uh, DNA samples, we're going to use larger volumes. So five microliters of these. Also comes out purple. And once you get one of these wells going, you can kind of get your frame, get your bearings a little bit better for the next ones. Um, so you should be able to see that kind of fall in and stay, stay in a rectangle shape. So it fell to the bottom. It's occupying that whole space of the rectangle. And uh, as we add the current to this, that's going to push the DNA uh, away from the black end, the black electrode, and toward the red electrode. So let me just hook that up since we're doing all demo here. Uh, modern gel rigs have a lot of safety features. So this lid has really only one way to go. It's got a couple of catches here. We've got to slide it in from the side. Uh, the electrical parts are <laughs> shielded from my prying fingers. So once this is sealed up and uh, live, it's really hard to access and accidentally electrocute yourself. So thank goodness. Go science. Uh, same thing here. These are the electrodes. Um, they don't know which one is red and black, so you have to be the person who makes sure red goes... Red goes to red and black goes to black. All right, red. And there we go, off to the side. On the back here is a power switch, carefully hidden. So carefully hidden, they put it off to the side. Okay, uh, power switch here. Turns this device on, comes out with an error message. That was a good start. <laughs> These things are touchy. Try again. Look at that. Perfectly fine. Uh, it's set for voltage. So V means that it's going to hold the voltage constant. You also could set it for uh, amperage, milliamps. So if you remember from physics, voltage is a measure of resistance. Uh, amperage is a measure of current. So we want to set it for voltage and... You just increase this, set it to 100 or whatever you like. So set for voltage, set to 100, uh, run or pause. We're going to try run there, see how that goes. All right, it has not given us trouble. Let's see, we're going to double check. And if this is working right, we should be able to see some bubbles. There's just a couple bubbles in there. All right, so there's a little bit of bubble going on. Uh, maybe we crank that up, we'll get some more bubbles. Okay, so we're going to let this run for a little while. You should see uh, it's ever so faint. It was faint to begin with, but the purple dye is going to continue going down, and we can use that to track the progress. So basically, we want to go uh, at least as far as we need to to have those bands separate out. Uh, we'll compare them to the ladder, which will show up in that first lane, and uh, we're going to see everything once we get this under the imaging equipment, uh, which we'll do a little bit later when this is done running.